Welcome to the Strong Single and Human podcast, a real look at single parenting, how to navigate the ups and downs of life with kids on your own while keeping sane. We cover all manner of subjects from domestic violence, dealing with childhood trauma, through to fussy eaters and how to help your kids become resilient. I'm your host, Claire Martin. Welcome. This week's guest is a certified clinical hypnotherapist. She discovered that 100% of her one-to-one clients have found the seeds of their adult issues in childhood trauma, but mostly simple misconceptions they made as children. So she thought, if this is the case, why not learn how to help children see their thoughts clearly, ask the right questions, and take advantage of this early stage of development to instill positive suggestions that will set them up for success in the future. It all starts by learning about yourself and doing the healing work on our own. You know, the whole put the oxygen mask on first and then help your child analogy. Hey, welcome Ruthie Rene to the podcast. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here all the way across the world. I'm ex- oh, there are there is so much about this that I want to talk to you about. I really can't wait to delve <laughs> in. So look, um, ch- tell us a bit about yourself. T- tell us um, how you got to become a clinical hypnotherapist and then how you got to the point where you realized that um, – childhood trauma may be our misconceptions as a kid of some of the things that have happened to us. Yeah. Well, so a little bit about me. I'm, I'm a mom. I have three beautiful children and one grandbaby and a brand new husband. And I'm just, I'm so excited about life. I went through many different areas of, of self-help I was a yoga instructor. I managed a health food store, got nutritionist. I was a nutritionist for autoimmune disease. And just the more I found, I just kept finding the more and more missing pieces that, that helped myself, my family. And along with the most recent before hypnotherapy, I was a national educator for a cannabis company. So that's kind of on the side, which believe it or not, that got me working with a lot of parents with autistic children and so, so, so many little movements, but really hypnotherapy came as a, a hail Mary for me in fixing some distressing and embarrassing dental trauma, like trauma where I woke up holding the dentist's hand, hugging a pillow, crying for my dead mother and wanting my teddy bear that burned up in a house fire as an adult. Okay. It wasn't even childhood <laughs> trauma. The dental trauma was tra- trauma, but I, I was so thoroughly embarrassed after that experience. I was like, I am going to fix this. Now at that time I was a nutritional and life coach. And so I knew quite a bit and I knew where the trauma even came from. I was about seven years old and that's how I showed up. When anybody talked about anything dental, I would just ball like a seven-year-old. And then I found doc, Dr. Joe Dispenza did God, his meditations. I, I know like anyone uh, out sure, there listening, sure. Dr. Joe Dispenza, go and Google him, find out more information about him. He is, he's just very interesting and his theories are so fascinating. So fascinating. Absolutely. Yeah. It, breaking the habit of being yourself was my yes. intro that said, okay. okay. And the interesting thing is he doesn't teach anything really new. He puts information that we've had for thousands of years together with technology and has introduced it to the modern world. And so it's just, it's so wonderful. So after that, I start. I got my, um, I went to school and became a certified clinical hypnotherapist. And what I noticed over and over and over again with my clients is that most of your misconceptions and problems 
are not, well, number one, your problem is almost never your problem yeah. where there's always something underneath it. And that will stem back to childhood. Childhood trauma is what we talk about, but often there isn't any like terrible trauma that would like, you know, somebody would go to jail over. It's more really hurt feelings and confused little kids. And then we, we keep those stories or we develop the programs in our brain and we grow up that way and we keep them. And so then basically like, you know, you're a 25, 30 year old and your finances are managed by the mind of what you learned as a five and six and seven year old from your parents. So it's no wonder we say, oh, I'm going to be a millionaire and I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And then you fall backwards and like, I don't know what happened. It's because of the program, that subconscious programming. Yes. Wow. It, it, wow. It is. <laughs> it is. And, and there, yeah. And there are so many people out there <laughs> who I've read about. Um, Bruce Lipton is one, another guy who basically yeah. talks about the fact that we've we've got this dna g our genes as such like that but that we can actually mm -hmm. um change our genes change our well maybe not change our dna but change our genes basically um or not switch yeah. them on so we may have um a gene that means that we have to be careful because of um a certain disease or something like that and that stress mm -hmm. and the environment that we're within Although we have this gene, stress, the environment, how we actually deal with things can switch this gene on and therefore mean that we get an illness or whatever. And he's he's delving into the the, you know, the cells, cell set up them, you know, and also microbiomes. Don't even get me on microbiomes. It's my new little fascination at the moment. So, oh God, oh, I love them. Oh, for sure. Well, maybe not some that are bad for us, oh, but the good fine. ones are great. But it's just, yeah, it's my new, yeah. Oh, exactly. And it is a balance. <laughs> the balance, the balance. I know. But when you Sorry. think about them, but... yes. And when you think about now, this is getting way out in the weird, weirdo zone, but I, I think of myself, I am the mind that, directs things in my body. We know we have scientific proof to know that that works. So with all those trillions of living organisms inside of us and our cells, which are intelligent and living, I'm the God of this universe. I call my body. So wouldn't it make sense to be a gracious, loving God and speak kindness to your body and all of the living things within it. And it, and it does a lot better for no, you. I know, I know. And I suppose this is a good segue because I really want to talk to you about this. Quantum field. Mm. Now you mentioned quantum field yeah. um, on your, on Facebook, in your website and, and things like that. So what is quantum field? I know quantum, quantum physics. Field. But what is quantum yes. field? Is it yeah. the same? It's it. Well, the quantum field is that, is that in between there's that, um, you know, when you're not quite asleep or you're not quite awake, that in between that twilight where your mind is fuzzy, we can enter into what we call the quantum field. That's a place where our bodies are too physical are they're too too much matter so our bodies can't go with us but our mind our our imagination our soul if you want to call it that can slip out and enter this state of mind or this this quantum field and that is the place that's the playground of the imagination for creation this is where we start to take ideas into effect and decide if we're going to plant the seed deep enough that it's going to grow. And then eventually we pr bring it into the physical world or if we let it go quantum field. And this is why I call my meditations quantum field trips and my right. website is quantum yes. field trips. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what the curiosity comes, but with the if you take a trip into the quantum field through meditation or through guided hypnosis or, or however you get there, that is the easiest place for you to do unravel 
the things in your mind and make sense of it and decide, make new conscious decisions on what you want to believe, what's most helpful for you. And that's because the ego's not in the way. When we talk something like you and I are talking right now, we have, we have our mind, our conscious mind is going, well, okay, what is she going to say next? And then I'll, I'll follow that up with this. And how is my hair doing? And do, am I going to cough? You've got all these thoughts going on. Yeah, I've just like had a and, throat gurgle. So it's all good. <laughs> I've got my, my herbal tea. Yeah, exactly. Is, I'm like, maybe I should not drink so much of this, but yeah. <laughs> so in this state, you just what I like to describe it as you put your body to sleep, you let your ego take a rest and your higher consciousness comes forward and gets to explore and play and teach. And that's the best part is the the teaching. And that's, I didn't actually finish my question. How I, how I started helping parents and children. Oh, you're okay. I, what I notice is so many things come stem back to the childhood. I thought, well, isn't it, <laughs> doesn't it make sense to teach parents what to watch, how to talk to their children so that they're aware of what's going on so that their kids can start off on a better foot so that they, they don't have as much garbage by the time they get to their twenties and thirties and save some therapy dollars. So, even, you know, cause it's always just silly things. I remember when I was a kid, the story I like to tell is when you lay on your pillow and you can hear, hear your heartbeat in your ear, you know, and there's boom, boom, boom. I literally thought armies were marching around my neighborhood, making sure that all the kids were in bed. I was terrified to get out of bed. I don't know how many years I decided that that was true until I got outside and there were no armies or I learned about the heartbeat. I'm I'm not exactly sure how that was replaced, but I was very shy. I didn't talk to my parents or any adults. So I grew up with all kinds of interesting programs and most of us do. Yeah. 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 Mine was probably as a kid, I had so much to say, but being a child, you sort of you know, parents go, oh, shush, we're trying to do, you know, because they're busy at the end of the day and yeah. people say, oh, yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. And and so I know <laughs> this is one of the biggest frustrations going through as an adult, if people don't listen to me, like it gets me so angry and so annoyed, right? All I want is for somebody just to listen to me and, and, and that's it. I don't care then. I'm happy, right? It's all good. And it's really funny because I'm very conscious of that. Um, and so with mm. my son, although I do do that, oh, look, I'm busy. Look, I'm just, I do do that, right? Because <laughs> I work full time and, you know, there's times where I go, dude, honestly, please, I'm trying right. to concentrate about, you know, how much ingredients I put in this recipe I'm doing or whatever. And he's gabbing away. <laughs> but I do, yeah, I am very conscious of it as well. And I sort of go, oh, God, hang on a minute, take a breath. Right, Okay okay, I'm free now. What do you want to say? Because I know I was so frustrated that I felt as though I wasn't being heard as a kid. Yeah. So, yeah. So Claire, let me, let me ask you this question real quick. When oh, we go psychoanalyze, me. <laughs> when will that frustration come forward when you feel like you're not being listened to uh, just first thing that comes to your mind about how old are you feeling in your head? Why won't anybody listen to me? Six. There you go. So now you know where to go back and we'll talk a little bit about self-hypnosis. You go find that first time, that first sensitizing event is what we call it. And when you decided that it was so terrible when somebody wasn't listening to you, really what that meant about you. And it and that wasn't the truth. It wasn't anything bad about you, Oh no! but it's what you decided. It's the rule you made. It's the story you created. And then you go in with your adult self, your higher consciousness, and you fix it. And then all of a sudden you can have an adult mind. When people aren't listening to you, you have the understanding. You don't have that seven-year-old coming, listen, banging yeah. on your consciousness. And, it, and, it, look, I, and I, I am aware of it, but it is quite interesting because I do sometimes go, oh, and then I go, oh, hang on a minute, step back. 
<laughs> step back. It's not Ray, all about you because it is. You go back to the yeah. as a six year old, me, 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 me. Because as kids, that's all we think, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, mummy and daddy are arguing because it's about us, um, or you know. Um, uh-huh. They're not listening to me because it's about me. I'm not worth listening to or right. whatever. And it's nothing to do with that at all, right? It's just that yeah. uh, they're busy or they're you know, doing, you know, they're they whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Okay. So, well, then, but then how do we reprogram ourselves? Because I know you've gone, you, this is one of the reasons you started all this was because you wanted yeah. to help people to deal with their misconceptions as children so that they can help their own children. So how do we do it? How do we do that? That is the question of the day. How do we do that? Because I know know everybody listening is like, yeah, I get tired of that child coming, that bratty teenager coming forward and trying to take over my life. Um, So I found that it was very slow going, helping one person at a time. And I learned how to do my own self-hypnosis. Well, we touched on it in school that I found some of my own ways, mainly because I would find my biggest problems would come out on the night or the weekends when I wasn't able to get a hold of somebody to work with me. So now what I do is teach self-hypnosis programs. Now there are numerous ways that you can get what you want to do to reprogram those childhood misbeliefs or misunderstandings are to get through that filter. We have what's called a reticular activating system or in hypnosis is called a critical factor filter. And you can go to my YouTube um, channel and, and learn more about that. But that's basically our brain's bouncer. It decides what's going to come through and stick in our head and come to their conscious mind or what we're just going to bounce out. Have you ever looked in a room 30 times for something, you know, is there. It's like, I know it's here. I know it's here. And you can't see it all. You walk away, have somebody else come in and it's right there. Yeah. But it didn't pat, it didn't get through that critical factor filter. So you literally didn't see it. So there's all kinds of reasons for that, but what you want to do, you can do a few things repetition. I'm sure you've heard affirmations, say them a thousand times a day, and maybe in five years, you'll get, (laughs) it'll make it through. So lots and lots of repetition. Music also moves through that filter. So when you're saying your affirmations, you can put them to music and and you'll listen to yourself better. Um, That's why we have music in commercials and and movies. You know, there's a reason that TV programs are called programming. Be careful what you watch it's liter- and your children too. They are being programmed as you watch them. And you can tell too, because you look at their little eyes and there's completely glazed over, you know, like, hello, 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 hello. Are you there? But they're not, they're being, they're being um, programmed right in front of you. So music repetition, the biggest thing is emotion. So when you're saying your affirmations, you want to feel it more than anything. And that can be a good or a bad thing. Now, when you're kids and somebody says you're ugly or you're stupid or you're whatever, if you feel a big way about that, it's going to go right into your subconscious mind as truth. Now, if somebody says yeah, wow, it you're ugly or you're stupid and you laugh and because you know better, you're like, sticks yeah, and stones, you bounce it out. Then it, the feeling, the emotion's not there. So it doesn't go through. So to get through in the end, you want big emotion. Affirmations. I don't know if you've heard of those. I like those so much better than affirmations. Because affirmations. Affirmation is me saying, I am so amazing. That's and an affirmation or affirmation. Affer, like with Affirm. affirmation. Yeah, that's right. So that's I, like, I, I'm a legend, I I'm beautiful, yes. I'm yeah. sexy, I'm right. brainy, yes. whatever. Yeah, All the things you want. You stand in the mirror with your Wonder Woman pose and you yep, look in your right. eyes. Yes. And that, that, those are great unless you feel like you're lying to yourself. Yes. Because if you 
feel if you're saying this is BS, then you're feeling like a liar and liars aren't good. Nobody wants to be a liar. So then it turns into something bad. Well, that was what I was going to say to you. I was going to say I'd heard. So everyone goes, I'll stand in the mirror and say, you know, I love me. I love me. I love me or whatever. Right. And I go, well, that's okay. But I've heard that affirmations Mm -hmm. sometimes don't work. And I suppose that's the reason why. So what's that formation then? If you're missing the emotion or the believability, it's not going to be helpful and it can be harmful actually. So instead you can shift the words to, I'm learning to love me. Okay. And I want to, I'm, I'm practicing, I'm practicing being amazing today. So, but an affirmation is a question for your mind. You, your brain really likes to answer things. We're very inquisitive and we'll put on our detective's hat. So if you say instead, how am I so amazing? Your subconscious oh, wow. mind for all of the reasons of why you're so amazing. Now, have you ever heard a parent say, why are you so stupid? Yeah. Yeah. And it breaks your heart. And so that little kid's mind is searching for reasons. And now all throughout the day and going to school, they're going, well, that's why I'm stupid. That's another reason why I'm stupid. So it's so important. And my goodness, I, I was a single mom for just a while. Um, my husband left to, we, I had to sell the house with three little kids, three kids under four and (laughs) an emergency room the next day visit with, we won't get into that, but it's hard. It is so hard. And I did it again when my kids were teenagers. Um, but you get so focused and busy in your own life. You just want to remember to take a breath when you're with those little ones and understand that before between the age of eight and 10, that reticular activating system, that filter isn't very solid. It's, it's letting everything in. That's why their kids are so gullible. They're believable. Santa Claus, the tooth fairy, you, you can tell them anything. And let me say that again, you can tell them anything and you'll begin to make programs. So ask those amazing questions to them. Ask, ask them to search for why they're so smart and how are you so good looking? Well, it must have been me. How were you get did you get so good looking? Whatever, whatever you know that will be helpful for them. And then the last thing that is by far the easiest and quickest is hypnosis. You're just going to get right into that quantum field where you can see things a little more clearly without all of the ugly emotion and you make your mind up. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And look, I have to agree with you. I'm very cognizant of the fact that, because, and I'm, it's just because my son's been playing soccer this morning and it's morning here in Australia, but um, I'm very cognizant of the fact of not really highlighting. I mean, he's six, right? He is no professional Mm -hmm. soccer player. There is no like going in there and going, buddy, you know, you didn't look for space. You need to get into the tackles more. He's just playing, right? So it's really Uh about picking up and highlighting the things that he did really well. Because the things that he didn't do so well, guess what? He'll get them. So it's about saying, wow, you scored a really awesome goal. That was a really awesome tackle, you know, and all of those sort of things to encourage him and not maybe highlighting the stuff that he didn't do so well because he'll sort that. That's why he's got a coach there and it's Mm -hmm. just to bolster him up and say, buddy, well done, you know, so that he goes, wow, I'm good at all of these so that he's not worried about that. He'll get the bad stuff he'll get bad stuff it's not bad stuff he'll just get the stuff he can't really do very well at the moment um (laughs) and he's learning yeah yeah and And it's conscious to encourage yeah no exactly exactly and i'm like one of these driven mums who's like oh come on look and i'm like on the sidelines going right don't shout at him for looking for space or you know and i'm going come on get in there (laughs) and i'm like no 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 don't do that it's all about yeah you got a goal but not actually having a whinge on the sidelines so yeah it's um yeah it's only and it's only because i drive myself so i'm like oh i need to do better at such Mm -hmm. and such or i've you know how do i improve this or how do i do that and i'm sort of driven that way and so i sort of drive that i'm trying not to but i'm sort of feel as though i'm driving that into my child as well (laughs) 
<laughs> well, you just watch, so, yeah. watch and see some children thrive on things like that because they're driven too. So you just yeah. watch and see how he responds when, when you're giving him incentive and pushing in and, and um, encouraging, not, not pushing, yeah. then does, does he light up? He's like, yeah, I'm going to do this. Or does he feel like, oh, I'm not good enough. You can tell their, their little body language is pretty big. <laughs> yeah. He quite, um, he likes doing well. And so putting him into competition is good as long as you can encourage him to, you know, come on, buddy, we'll work at this and we'll get like right. X, Y, and Z. So, yeah, so it's about us being a team and working at it, but not really highlighting the stuff that's not going so well as such. Right. Um, and maybe going, well, how can we do it better? And not saying, oh, you didn't do very good at that and, like, get him to think about, well, how could you do that better? And getting him to answer it. Yeah. But less about Oscar and his soccer. Because you know, <laughs> and he's got everything crossed, but you know, who knows? Um, okay, so self hypnosis, right? I go, what is that? So, what is that, right? Is it sitting there with a watch going tick tock, tick tock, <laughs> trying to hypnotize yourself? What is it? Um, how do we do it? There are gosh, a number of ways that you can work with yourself, self-hypnosis. Actually, side note, all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. I'm a guide. I like to call myself a guide um, because when you come and sit in my chair or on Zoom in your own chair, we're going to have a conversation. I will guide you through the steps to get into the quantum field. But if you decide, no, I can't be hypnotized, guess what? You can't. There's, I can't push. It's something that you have to allow. So you have it's to kind of like, to it. yes, it's like when you're boiling water and it never boils while you're looking at it. But as yeah. soon as you turn away, you're like, ah, of course it's a hypnosis. The state is it's meditation. Basically it's getting yourself in a meditative state. There are lots of names for it. So really it's just paying attention to your mind and seeing how low can you go before you go to sleep oh. and still be able to ask yourself questions and work through things you can do you can write scripts we have suggestive therapy is where where you write out a script and then you read it record it put it to music and then it's going into your subconscious mind repetition or you can have, we can do age regression therapy with a gestalt method, which is just like I would do in a session with, with a client, only it's yourself. That's a little more tricky if, you, if you're not sure about, I'll just say if you have a history of a lot of trauma um, you might want to guide for, for the deep things, but, but just understanding, starting small, taking a course is really helpful because I will guide you through the steps. Um, another way to do it is what I like to call the directive. And I'm going to teach you this right now. And everybody can do it starting today. Thousands of people over generations of time have used this method. People like Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla, um, uh, lots of artists, writers, you get, you get stuck on something. You don't know the answer. You loop it in your mind as you're going to sleep and you're in those twilight moments as you're drifting off, you go through the, so I'm just going to use the, uh, waking up at five 30. Because for so many people, it's hard to wake up early oh and they keep snooze, 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 snooze. So you just go in your mind and you start to feel how invigorated and excited you feel when you wake up at 530 and you actually have energy and you want to get up. You're excited for the day and, you're, and you just go through whatever words work for your mind. I love waking up at 530. It happens so automatically. It's easy for me. Thank you. Thank you, my dear brain and body, for getting up energized in the morning oh, wow. at 5 30 a.m. This is so wild. I will so be wild. doing this on Sunday. I will be doing this on <laughs> Sunday because I'm going to need to get up early on Monday. But yeah, okay, cool. There you do it. So anything like that, you can, you can, remembering where you lost something, you looping, find, finding, thank you, gratitude for finding my ring. And, and then, 
you watch for the next couple of days. Cause sometimes you'll wake up and it's bam, you know it. Um, other times you have really weird dreams because your brain will subconscious will talk in analogies to you. And so those are lots of fun. And then, um, it might take a couple of days where you're doing something completely different. And all of a sudden you're like, ah, now I remember that's where it is. So it's like your, your computer, you're, you're the programmer and you're giving your computer brain, the directive search for blankety blank. And then you let it go. We don't stare at the computer and wait for it to do its download or whatever. We just go into another tab and get to work. So that's what we do. You go get on with your life and allow it to come forward. So all kinds of fun ways, but that's the easy. And so um, with this, so basically what you're saying is self-hypnosis is like a, a going into a meditative state. So meditating to a certain yes. extent. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. And so with actual words. Yeah. Oh. With a purpose. It's yeah. meditating with a purpose, an okay. express purpose. And so would you, with that meditation um, as such, do you use music? Do you do you get into the state and then start to suggest things to yourself or do you do that from mm-hmm. the beginning? Do you like say, right, I'm going to play this music and I'm going to get to a s- state? How do you know if you're in that quantum field? I mean, yeah. Okay. So um, have you ever had a really boring class? God, yeah. And the teacher oh, no? just drones on and on and all of the sudden you're completely somewhere else and you have no idea what's yeah, going you're on. You're like daydreaming. I've done not yeah. even a class. It's, I do that in meetings sometimes. <laughs> don't tell so me. So if that's all it is, that right there is a hypnotic state. It's just popping out of your conscious mind and you're off wandering about in the quantum field. That's where your imagination is. That's where you're and sometimes you don't even know what you're thinking about. Somebody will say, what do you think? Well, I don't know. I was just, what are you looking at um, that way? But I'm looking through all of those things. It's when you're, you're not really. So do you start with a question really- in your head then and go, okay, um, I want to, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of a question. But if you, uh, but you start with a, I want to find out why. I get angry when I do X, right? And you start with that question and you go and then you just meditate and that question's there in your head and then your brain starts to find the answer for you or do you plant it first and then go for it? Yeah, kind of. And it can, and it can go so many different ways. There's, oh, there are so many fun tools. You can, you can take what you want and so you have a picture and on people that can't see me are going to, okay, you have a picture in the left side of your ma- brain maybe, and you want a picture in the right side of your brain and you're going to move it in your mind. You're going to imagine moving the feeling and the picture of you already. Like for instance, I want to be healthy. I've been so sick and this is, and I'm sad and whatever. And you think about a time when you did feel great and you lock onto that feeling, you feel it in your body. And then you visualize, you go forward in time and you visualize what it will feel like to feel that great again on this day. And what will you be doing? What will you be wearing and smile in your face? And then you put that over the thought of where you're at right now and then move it back and forth until you feel like, Oh, that is me. I'm, I'm already there. So there's, there's one way, the question, the, the emotions. Um, yes, you can ask questions. Why, why am I feeling this? When was the first time I remember feeling this amount of anger? Why, why are I not controlling? Why do I not feel in control? Who taught me? That's a good one. Who taught me to react this way? And sometimes it might've been yourself. It might've been a parent, a teacher, siblings. It might've been TV programming. 
I had one client that had really bad relationships. And when we went back to find out where it came from, it was a silly oh. show that she watched when she was 13 and the girls were brats and the boys were mean and she didn't want to have anything to do with oh, it. And bizarre. so she kept manifesting boys like that were in that show. It was, it was just really interesting where it comes from. The main thing is when you're searching is that you have grace and acceptance and no judgment for whatever comes up. We're just going to be curious and interested. Huh? Well, that's where that came from. Okay. Well, I can see why I thought that way. What's a better way to think about it. And let's, let's, Let's try this one instead. There's all kinds, so many things that we, we could talk for. Well, my course is eight weeks. So that's how long we so could do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we But also like, like, and I agree with you, if there's trauma there, then yeah, um, it, it's highly suggested to use a guide or somebody who yeah. can actually help At least you. in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, because... Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of stuff that comes up that you might want to talk through. You might want to, um, somebody may be able to guide you in a certain way to be able to deal with it. And I right. know, I know like, um, this sort of thing, mm -hmm. I know they're testing it with PTSD. So PTSD, uh, and there's also hallucinogenics that they're testing as well, which, uh, like MDMA and stuff like that, um, methamphetamines, um, that, bring somebody who's had severe PTSD into a state where it's a, it's a more comfortable, happy, relaxed state to be able to deal with what you're just talking about. Right. So, yeah. um, and I, it's great wow. that we're starting to not be so narrow minded about the drugs we've got out mm -hmm. in the, you know, out in the world. Um, yeah, I was going sure. to say Iron Apple and I'm going, that's not a drug. That's a place, <laughs> but um, I um, ayahuasca. Uh, ayahuasca that what that's what I, I was love. talking about. Ayahuasca, mm -hmm. and there's various different other um, ketamine. That, but we've seen lots of success with ketamine all, treatments. Yeah, but all for my view, I go all of those. You don't just go to a drug dealer, pick them up, and go. I'm going to try right. this and try and sort myself out because that isn't the right way to do it. It's about no. being in a, you know, being in a. Um, safe. measured safe environment where you've got people around you who aren't on it, who are mm -hmm. able to help you through that journey. So I think, yes. yeah, and I um, need to desperately find somebody who can do this so we can, um, <laughs> not for me, but so we can bring them on and talk on the podcast and actually talk about the benefits of it and stuff like that. Oh, well, I have, oh, I've have got some people. It? We'll, we'll talk later. Oh, I actually, okay. well, remember I, I was an educator for a cannabis company. Oh, of course. We were oh. also very involved with yeah. the psychedelics. And um, now my, my, not my company, the company I worked for was CBD, Hemp Lucid. I'm just going to throw it out. Hemp Lucid is an amazing company. Um, numerous people that have done ayahuasca ceremonies have then, I've done uh, hypnotherapy treatments with them. And they basically say it's the same thing, only with without the vomiting. Yeah, the vomiting <laughs> and, and the, the feeling. Dis yeah, and all <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. With yeah. all of the psychedelic world, you absolutely want to look at your protocols and make sure that things are in order. I have had, I mean, okay, so I had some pretty severe mental um, distress. I back before it was bipolar. Remember when it was manic depressive, that's what I was tagged with. And then anxiety and, and I went the meds route and, and needed the natural for my brain. And then I spent 20 years getting myself to a healthy state of mind, one ketamine tr treatment, and I was having panic attacks. I couldn't even go inside my office. I was just devastated. Luckily, somebody smart came out into the hallway and talked to me and helped me understand my, my state of mind. And my brain was so open. And so, yeah, don't, yeah, no, it's People very serious stuff. With drugs. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, you know, I, and I've said this on the podcast, like I have taken various different recreational drugs, 
MDMA, mushrooms, LSD, various things like that, right, uh, in a dance party setting um, and a very long time ago because my son is six, right? So it was a very long time ago, right? Don't do anything like that around my son at all. But, <laughs> I mean, it's really not a, you know, it's not a healthy mix, right? And um, no. at the end of the day, that was party party time I, I worked hard and I played hard right but uh-huh. they it's to a certain extent I mean I was very lucky I had no bad experiences um but I had very good people around me who I knew so I knew I was in a safe environment I knew I was okay and I trusted these people explicitly right but I don't I don't condone people going out and going well that's okay we're going to do an LSD trip, but we're going to go on mushrooms and it's going to sort my PTSD out because it's it has to be measured. It has to be. Um, and like you say, self-hypnosis or hypnosis does the same thing, right? So without the throwing up, without the fasting, without the interfering with your own digestion sort of structure and microbiome and all of that stuff, right. and let's not get onto that. But, um, yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> my view would be, Try the self hypnosis stuff if you want to go further down that avenue. Mm-hmm. Then I would go go and seek out reputable people who right. will be able to help you go yeah. on that journey. But yeah, no, I agree. I love that we're now starting Absolutely. to stop being idiots about. I mean, drugs are very harmful. Don't get me wrong; they are extremely harmful when they become when they you know become addictive and and all of those things. And a lot of right. that is to do with trauma that we deal with and we're just masking. Mm-hmm. That's why we're taking the mm-hmm. drugs and drugs are smoking, alcohol, the- food, shopping, pornography, as well as the hardcore stuff like heroin, ice and all of that stuff. So, you know, exactly. it's the exactly. compulsion, the compulsion. It's still, it works the same way in the brain. And it's almost always when you're after the, that dopamine, the serotonin, the things that, you weren't feeling at a young age, well, guess what? You can time travel and go back and take care of that baby yourself and learn how to make the chemicals. That's when we talk about the chemical imbalance and I should be careful here (laughs) because I'm not telling people to go off of their medication or whatever, but we say, I'm just not, I don't make it. I don't make those chemicals and whatever. Well, that's because you've been making the wrong chemicals and you, you know how we get stuck in recipes or like, Oh, we eat the same things every single week. Well, I made the same depressing chemical soup for most of my life for the first half of my life. At least I woke up every day in despair that I was awake. Like, Oh, I woke up again. God, why didn't you take me? And just so sad about like having to do the work of life. And then it took some mental focus to, to feel that way and then shift and say, I don't want to feel this way. I choose to feel this. And after time repetition and the feeling, making the feeling grow, thinking about, okay, well, what does make me feel good? What does peace feel like? I'm just going to lay here. I've got 10 more minutes. I'm going to lay here and I'm going to feel peace with my life. And then eventually it got to where it was automatic. And now I wake up every day. Of course, I do have the love of my life right next to me. And I open my eyes and I'm just so amazed that I get to live in my life when 15 years ago, I was yeah, trying to take bizarre. it. And look, and at the end of the day, right, I have to you say, never know. you're no, uh, and <laughs> I don't mean to offend you here, but you're no like multi-billionaire, right, who's sitting there with half a dozen cars and a helicopter and, you know, you fly, you know, you fly first class on all no. plane journeys or you've got your own <laughs> plane or what. Like, you're like me, like, you know, we have like, well, what I would call normal lives. We're not in the media, um, although we're on podcasts, but like we, we're not out there like where we've got paparazzi <laughs> sitting on our front door every five minutes. Like we're like everyone right. else who would be no. sitting on listening to this, listening to this podcast. Maybe there are millionaires listening to this podcast. I yeah. don't know, but hey, uh, we definitely aren't. But, you know, we, we <laughs> have a, I'm very grateful, right? I don't have a million dollars in the bank. Mm. You know, I have a car and a house and I have my son and 
and I'm and I have a good job and I do these podcasts. You and have I, your health. I, your, exactly. And I wake up me. every morning and go, great, I'm really grateful for yeah. where I'm at and where I'm sitting. I love living in Australia. I love the people. I love the weather. And but I'm just grateful. I don't I probably would like to fly business class. It's a lot better flying back to the UK <laughs> business class than it. But you know, like I'm but I'm grateful that I have the money to be able to even I pay know. for a fly ticket and fly back home to the UK yeah. to see my parents and my brother and my family over there. So yeah. although there are another although there is another level, I'm just grateful that I'm able to do that. And yeah. um yeah, and there are people that aren't able to do it. So yeah, I agree. And that's an interesting thing you say because so many people think that they have to get to that higher level before they can feel happy with themselves or grateful. And that's that's flip-flopped. To get to that higher level, you have to have the feelings and the disposition and the way of life inside you that matches what you want to be. And then it's not work. It just starts happening yeah and I, I have to say in my 20s I strived I really strived and I was driven I want to be yeah. there right and now sitting here at 50 I go well I just want the world to happen to me and it like it will give me whatever <laughs> it needs to give me as long as I'm happy and grateful mm-hmm. nobody's shooting at me and I'm all good and my son's happy and healthy and I'm happy and healthy and I've got you know I'm I'm not scurrying through bins looking for yeah. food each day and all of those things then it's yeah, fun no, thank you yeah thank you world yeah, yeah exactly exactly um so look um are there so no i'm going to rephrase this mm-hmm. so to is it that how do we help our kids then so is it that we help ourselves first by dealing with all of our childhood traumas or Mm. misconceptions Um, and then in realizing our misconceptions Mm. we can then go oh when we're about to I don't know explode on our child or to go and deal with like go wow you should have been doing this or you know Mm. you're awesome at that but you're not quite good at that is that where doing the self-hypnosis and working on ourselves will actually help us with working on our children. Cause I know you were saying uh, about putting the oxygen mask on us first and like then dealing with our kids and that dealing with our own stuff would help our kids maybe not go to, maybe not spend so much money on therapy and stuff like that later on in life. So is that what you mean? Yes, absolutely. And I, so <laughs> I get a a numerous clients that come or they'll take my course. And the reason for taking the course is because they want to help their husband or they want to help their angry children or their sister helping other people. But, and that's, that's their intention. And my, what I always say is let's focus on you and you're, you're not going to be able to help yourself without it spilling out into your family's lives and your neighbors. And some people will just disappear because you're no fun anymore to pick on. And because you're you're not. Yeah. But also they might be scared about dealing with themselves. Do you know? Do you well, for yeah. sure. Oh, for sure. Uh, there's so many interesting things happen. And it's, it's like you said, you just allow, allow life to give you whatever you need. And you're grateful. That's kind of it. Life doesn't have to be so hard. No, that was my biggest aha in life. Was because I was like you. I'm just good driven. Yes. I'm gonna work my tail off. I never got a handout, and that's okay because I can do it. I'm strong. And now I was like, mm, I'm just gonna flow and allow things to come with me, come to me. And I put out there, you know, I, I've worked my tail off on this course and aligning it just the right way. And now all these little windows are open. I have somebody that's um, translating my meditations into French, Spanish, and Ukrainian. So I can get some meditations out for those dear souls. And uh, it's just so much fun. And I get to meet people like you're in Australia. I'm Hello. Hello. Texas. 
Like who would have known I would meet I you and you're such a fun gal. We just, when I get to Australia, we'll hang out. Oh no, defo, <laughs> defo. No, but it's right. Like I, if you'd have said to me when the pandemic started two years ago, that I would have done a podcast for a year so that I would have started a podcast number one, bearing in mind that I work full time, I'm a single mom, there's no family or friends. Well, I've got friends. I can't say that I've got no friends, <laughs> but I've got friends who help me. But like, but I, I don't have that village that some people do have here because I'm in Australia on my own. And so, um, yeah, I would have never have thought a year on I would be here, yeah. episode 50, whatever, and have interviewed so many interesting people like yourself. And I'm, I'm learning every interview I learn from this. And it's great. Mm-hmm. You built your yeah, own maybe village. I have. Maybe I went sort this being on my own. And isn't that interesting? <laughs> when we think when we think we're missing out on something, we don't have something, and we're it's an honest desire that would be helpful for our lives. Pieces come together as long as you're willing to say yes. And now mm. here you are getting exactly what you needed, and in turn helping so many hundreds, thousands of other people that are also searching for that village. So yes, take care of your mind first. And then all of a sudden your eyes, when we take the film off and the film is, is hypnotic state uh, that here's the other tricky thing. All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. We also spend a lot of time as hypnotherapists, de-hypnotizing people making sure you're in the present right here so you can focus and, and not be, Oh my goodness. Do you know any sheeple? What are sheeple? <laughs> um, people sh- that are just following oh. everything and everyone, whatever Sheepy people just, oh, rah, yeah. over here. Rah, Sheepy people. Meh. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Because they're in that the hypnotic state is highly wow. suggestible so you're just like, oh, yes, okay, over here. Oh, okay, over. Instead, you want to be clear. You want to be clear, focused in your frontal cortex when you're learning something, when you're with somebody that you're not sure of. You want to be on your guard. There's there are reasons and and benefits for walls. However, we want to also be able to sink into the hypnotic state when it's beneficial for us. When we take the blinders off for ourselves, then we can see our children clearly. All of a sudden, the body language is like, oh, sweetie, I know you say you're fine, but I can see there's something going on. Let's talk about this. Or, you know, little kids don't really do that. You start coloring or you go for a walk or you play ball yes. and then let the conversation comes out. Well, even uh, older kids, my son tends to open up more if we're playing PlayStation or if mm-hmm. we're coloring or if we're playing soccer or whatever, then yeah. he will tend to open up more yeah. because it's a, it's a male distractive mind, I suppose. Exactly. They don't, they, you know, if you ask them a direct question, they're going to be like, no, and they button down. And then if you play stuff and then ask them the same question, their mind's distracted to distracted. So then they go, oh, yeah, no, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah, you Uh find out more that way. I don't know why. I'm (laughs) learning. I'm learning. Um, So, no, so, look, thank you. Thank you for coming and talking. Like, I could talk to you for eight weeks, as we said. I could talk to you for hours and hours (laughs) about this. And we haven't even, we haven't even touched on EFT and tapping and all of those things. So that's a whole, and maybe that's a whole different episode that we could go into because, sure. oh my God, that's, yeah. I, I've been aware of tapping and EFT for probably 10 years. Um, oh. I don't really do it, but I, um, I have done it. I don't do it now, but I have done it. And so that's mm. interesting. And maybe we'll discuss that on a different, different podcast. One of those that yeah. would be great. And if, and if there's burning desire, you can go find me on YouTube. Yes. I've got a tapping video there as well, but that tapping is one of those things that's just so beneficial and you kind of forget about it. Like drinking water. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired. Oh, maybe I need a drink and get some, some fluids in me. It's just, just one of those things that it, 
doesn't hurt. So you might as well give it a try. And if it brings some benefit, great. And if it doesn't, you keep keep, keep going with other stuff. Throwing another tool out. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Look, and, and that and so that's a good segue because I was gonna say, where can people find you? Um, regarding the, if they want to learn more about your course or look for you on YouTube and places like that, because you, you're, you're out there everywhere, aren't you? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent wonderful at getting in the social media. No, I, I. I would love for somebody else to just take care of that for me. Now watch, I'll get 12 yes. calls. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take care of your social media. Um, you can find me quantumfieldtrips.com. Right. Uh, you can also search on YouTube. I'm Ruthie Renee, R-U-T-H-I-E-R-E-N-A-E and quantum field trips. You'll, you'll find um, me there. And I have, I do have right now. I like I'm not sure when this will air, but the first week of June. So we're, we're in June 3rd recording next week is the first week of my, um, I call it create your reality because reality happens and we are creating it without knowing it, but now we can consciously, we learn how to consciously create the reality that we're actually wanting. So that's, that's all full of self-hypnosis, but as well as other wonderful mind management tools that go together, because you don't want to start manifesting something with self-hypnosis and then get, you are like, oh my gosh, well, I got the, the cute little cottage and the white picket fence and the guy, but Turns out he's an ogre and he's a hoarder. So this little cottage is, is too small. Now, what am I going to do to so clean up the thinking first before you start all that fun stuff, that creation. And I think that's about, so if you, if anybody is interested now is okay, I'm going to tell you something crazy that I've done that I've never done before. This time I spent three hours up in the middle of the night with God going, are you serious? Should I, how, why, um, this time only anybody can come in for whatever price oh they my want. God. So you can, and I'll share the link with you to put in the show notes. So if anybody wants to come over and just see what is this about, you'll be easily, even if you're a couple of weeks out, you're easily able to catch up. All the modules are in order DIY. And then we do a zoom call every Friday for Q and A and coaching. Um, so that is come pay $20 or $2,000 or whatever is comfortable for you. Exactly. And, and we are having so much fun. I'm very excited for the, the new people I have in that group. I've already heard stories of, Oh my gosh, I was searching for somebody and there you were. And so it's, it's fun. And so if you're feeling like, ah, it's time. Yeah, no, that would be awesome. Me. That would be awesome. Look, thank you so much for that. That's great. Yeah, I will post everything in the podcasty blurb at the bottom um, and go from there. I'm also on YouTube. So if you find me on YouTube, that's fine, although you won't see us physically, um, but that's okay. Um, and look, I have one final question for you. And thank you so much for coming sure. on this time because we're going to have you on again. Look, what book would you recommend to my audience and why? Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So I, <laughs> you don't know this about me, but I have, I am an audible I, I, oh, so am I at least 60 books a year. Love it. Um, so for parents, well, goodness, you know, since I mentioned it, a really great starting place is breaking the habit of being yourself. Oh, and if you're it really is, ready yeah. for it to take responsibility, because that's like, you know, you, you have to, once you take responsibility, you have the power, right? If it's not your fault, then it just happened to you. And that's the end. But if you have the power to do it or accept it or create whatever has happened, you have the power to change it. So breaking the habit of being yourself. Oh, okay. Another one, Michael Singer the untethered soul it's oh my gosh beautiful so beautiful yeah i have done so i have done i uh, i've done um well michael singer does a course a uh, oh. happiness course and i have done his happiness course as well oh oh lovely. so um when i was sort of like when i probably was very uh, 
I probably was a year out from being in a relationship with my son's dad. And uh, so I'd been a single mum for a year and I'd gone through a hell of a trauma place, traumatic places, and it was a bit of a roller coaster that first year. And I found Michael Singer and did his course. And um, it was amazing. And it was like life changing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I agree with you. And, um, yeah, and the other book you, the other book you were suggesting, which is, um, Oh, what is it? What was the other book? That it's a Joe Dispenza They're, book, isn't it? Um, breaking the habit breaking, of being yourself. Yeah. Joe and Dispenza. while I'm on a roll, I'm going to give oh, you God. one more Three. because we we have a lot of um, single parents, and uh, that sometimes you need a little bit of encouragement, and you you maybe don't want as much soft stuff. You need a a fighter. Jen Sincero, you are a badass. Oh, that is a yes. fun fun read to get into the realm of self-help but she does it in such a great fun way Loved and I've it. listened to that one as well so I'm an audible freak as well this is not yeah. an advert I don't get paid by them but I am an audible <laughs> freak as well I love it because being a single parent right you're driving around driving the kids to wherever yeah. or um you're cooking dinner or whatever and that's you know, one of the reasons I started a podcast because I thought, well, as a single parent, you could be cooking dinner, but have your pods in and be listening to a podcast or whatever. And that's what I do with Audible books as well. So, yeah, you know, you can learn anything. just listen yeah. wherever you can. Um, we yeah. are going to be programmed. We yeah. can't get away from no. programming ourselves and other people. So you might as well put some good stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. Look, Ruthie, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's been such a pleasure to have you on board with us today. Um, yeah, look, you'll have a great weekend because it's your Friday night, isn't it? Where you are. Yes, it is. I I will. We're going to go out of town, have a little getaway ourselves. Thank you, Claire. So So thank you for selflessly giving up your time and sharing, creating that village. Good for you. I love it. I love it. It's not really. I don't feel as though it's giving up my time. I just love doing this. But look, thank you. Well, look, I'm going to say bye for now because we're going to get you back on. Um, and we'll Wonderful. go into tapping and all of that malarkey. We'll do some other subjects. I'm sure there's plenty we could talk about, like you say. Oh, for right sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, look, um, I'm going to say bye for now. All right. Well, you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Thanks, Claire. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed this podcast and you would like to hear more, please hit subscribe wherever you like to hear podcasts. If you would like to support us further, share this episode with your friends and family. And finally, drop us a review on iTunes as I'd love to hear your thoughts, comments and ideas. It all helps me to understand and produce awesome content you want to hear just like this. If you want to check out our past episodes, write to us, appear on the podcast, or for links, resources, and show notes, go to our website, www.strongsingleandhuman.com. We are also on all the usual social media platforms, Insta, Facey, and Twitter. I hope you have a wonderful week. And I hope to see you back here again soon. Be kind to yourself and remember, no one is perfect. We're all just putting one foot in front of the other and doing our best. I'm Claire Martin and you've been listening to the Strong, Single and Human podcast.